I don't do many videos inside the trailer. I just don't find it that visually interesting, at least for sharing. So that's, that's why a lot of the time my videos take place in the outdoors because I feel like that's, that's what I want to see. Like when I watch YouTube videos, I tend to watch stuff that takes place outdoors, you know, places that I'm not at, places that I can't get to, you know, anybody can get into a trailer or inside of a vehicle, inside of a van or whatever. So I don't find that just very visually interesting, but since it's freezing outside and it's dark and snowing, it's snowing a little bit, I'm going to try this in here. So I'm on the couch right now. I got a uh, tarp and I the reason I put this tarp on here is for the dogs because the dogs use it all the time. So then they can come in here and if they're dirty and especially like if they're wet, then it's not going to wreck the couch basically. And this couch folds out into a bed. So like I can have someone else can use this bed to sleep on, you know, it rolls out. And every once in a while, like maybe once every once a year or something, I'll roll it out and I'll have like movie night and, you know, I'll watch a movie here on the couch. Actually, that sounds kind of fun tonight. I haven't done that in a long time. So this is pretty much just a dog couch. I rarely, <laughs> I rarely sit on it. It's, it's really comfortable and it folds out into a really, really comfortable bed. So I'm pretty lucky to have it. And the dogs love it. Like I was saying, Dodger slept on it last night. Echo sleeps in it in the daytime usually. So Quartzite. Yeah, we're going to head to Quartzite again. That's where I'm heading right now. I'm going to take off tomorrow and I'm going to do some chores on the way down there i gotta hit the the dump and then pick up water I gotta fill up my tanks dump all my waste dump all my trash and then i'm gonna hit the walmart pickup service so i just kind of drive up there and then they load up my stuff into my vehicle i'm gonna turn the heater off it just kicked on i don't want it to mess up the audio So it'll turn off here in a second. But after I get my groceries at Walmart, then I'm going to head to the Costco where I can get some more groceries, basically. And I'll probably pick up a pizza, a $10 pizza. I love getting that. That's like kind of like my road food. And we're going to have a long day of driving tomorrow, you know, probably about 200 to 250 miles to drive. Probably about 250. We're going to be getting into uh, Nevada, I think. And I've picked a new place that I think I'm probably going to camp at. So if we make it, if the timing's right, then I'm going to be at a new place tomorrow night. So I'm kind of excited about that. Oh, I, actually, no, I think it's in Arizona. It's still, or we're in Utah right now. So we're going to be in Arizona tomorrow. I think, I, who knows? Because I thought we were going to Nevada. That's That's just kind of the way it is. Like when you're, one thing I learned when I started nomad lifestyle was you got to be ready to change your plans and you don't know where you're going to sleep the next night and even like an hour before it's bedtime you might not even know where you're going to end up and you're using these apps and your locations that you've marked on your maps as places that you could potentially stay and sometimes you get there and plans change or you don't make it far enough or you have to stop and get services somewhere else along the way. So you, you gotta be willing to kind of change up your plans. And I, I've gotten pretty good at that and I don't, it doesn't make me nervous anymore, not knowing exactly where I'm gonna stay. But I do try to have a general plan. And what I'll do is I'll, along the way, there'll be rest areas. There's at least one that I know of. So I can always use that as a place to stay if I need to stay. Like if I'm, if I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna make it, it's getting dark or the weather changes, then I know I, I can make it to this rest area and I can stay there for sure. So one of the other things I use Costco for is gas. A lot of times I get my gas at Costco. And uh, also I use like Loves. The truck stops work pretty good for gas. And they have pretty good prices. And sometimes you get little discounts. Um, so I use Loves. And the Flying J Pilot truck stops are my favorite ones right now. But we're going to get gas at Costco. And then also I'll probably have an empty tank of propane. So this Costco I know has propane, so I'll get propane there too. I don't think 
Costco really has the best prices on propane necessarily, but it's going to be convenient because I'm going to be right there. And then I've already checked the map and in the same kind of area that Costco's at is a place that I can get the dog food for the dogs because they get like a certain kind of dog food that's only at very few stores. Like I have to look it up and find out, make sure that the store has it. And there's um, a branch of stores called CAL Ranch Stores that's right near the Costco. So I'm going to go there and I'll be able to pick up some more dog food for the dogs. Because I'm planning to go to Quartzsite, and in Quartzsite, there's no place to get this dog food. Like I was saying, there's not really even any good grocery store, so I kind of want to stock up as much as I can. I, I can get their dog food from Quartzsite, but I have to drive 80 or 90 miles south into Yuma to pick it up, because that's the only place that has it. That's the nearest place that has it. What I did last year was there's a service in Quartzsite where you can get your mail delivered and you pay like three to eight bucks per letter or per package, different different amounts for different size packages, basically. And I got my dog food delivered there from Amazon. So I paid a few bucks more because of Amazon and then a few bucks more to pick it up at this service in Quartzsite. And it was really convenient and it's actually saved me money because I didn't have to drive all the way to Yuma to pick up their dog food. So Quartzsite has a lot of services and a lot of things that nomads can utilize. And I found that really exciting because doing nomad nomadic lifestyle on my own, I didn't really know any other nomads. I hadn't really even met any other nomads or anything. And I was trying to kind of make things work in the sort of the normal the normal way society works, but sort of adapt my new nomad lifestyle to that as far as like getting groceries and getting services and things like that. And when you get to Quartzsite, it's like, holy cow, like there's this place called the RV Pit Stop and you can just pull right in there and you can get propane and what else do they have? They have dump. You can pay for a dump. You can also get water. They have the, all these water stations. So different ways you can fill up water. If you got to fill up a van or jugs, you want to fill up jugs, you want to pay like per gallon, or you want to fill up your tank in your RV. They have this whole drive-through process there. They got all these stations that you just kind of drive through. Plus there's all these RV parks around there. So you can pay for a night if you want to hook up for electricity or whatever. It's really friendly to RVers and nomads and van lifers. And this time of year, in the winter time, it's even better because that's when everybody's there. There's tons of people there and there's going to be this huge RV show. So there's all these vendors. So you can, you can buy things that you need. They got kitchen wares and all kinds of stuff for your RV. Plus they got RVs for sale too, if you want to check those out. So I did that a couple times. I went and checked that out, but I'm really still kind of wanting to be, you know, kind of alone, like, quiet like I like my quiet time I don't want to hear generators and music and partying and I was really pleasantly surprised when I got to Quartzsite and it's pretty quiet the things I didn't like about Quartzsite well you pay this 180 for this pass which is turned out to be a really good deal and then you can use the dump and you get as much water as you want and, and garbage service right there the dump station and the water stations were kind of beat up so it, it just felt like, oh, BLM was like taking all this money in and they're not really giving us like decent facilities. They all worked and the water tasted fine. I didn't have any problems with the water, but it just seemed like they could have had it set up a little bit nicer. And plus the road going in um, to some of the campgrounds, they're paved, but they were really beat up. Now I've heard that they've changed that and they've paved, they've paved certain areas and they have new dump stations and new water stations so i'm excited about that like i think that's the only bad thing i can think of um i heard there was one story right right when i first got there some lady came into my camp she said oh she got ripped off the other night so she was warning me about some people that were camped nearby her because she had to take off and she was just upset that she had got her rv broken into that's really the only story that i heard that was bad. Um, there were some neighbors that were kind of near me and they had two dogs, three dogs running around, kind of big dogs. And they kind of got into it a little bit with Dodger. They, they like grabbed him by the neck once and rolled him over. 
and Dodger played cool. He just, he's like, I'm not fighting with those dogs. And they, and they laid off of him. So they didn't hurt him. He didn't get hurt. And he was fine afterwards. He came right back, right back to camp. It, I mean, he was running kind of around the camp. So Dodger was off his leash too. And these dogs were just off leash, kind of running all over. So it's kind of, you know, it's both our, our faults because both of our dogs were off the leash. But, you know, there really wasn't anything bad that happened. It did get really crowded, like January. It, January and February, it was like super, super crowded. Um, but I found a technique, which maybe I'll expose a little bit later, that helped me have a really secluded campsite, as secluded as you could get. So there weren't many people very close by. I did have some neighbors, you know, that I, you know, you kind of get used to the people that are around you and you can move around as much as you want. That's what's really cool. So if you get some neighbors you don't like, you can move as much as you want. This pass is good in all these different areas and there's different areas of Arizona and California that you can camp with this pass. So you can use it in completely different areas other than just quartzite. But within quartzite, there's a whole bunch of different areas you can camp. And then within these separate camp areas, there's all kinds of little nooks and crannies you can find. So I ended up being pretty secluded. I felt secluded enough. I mean, I could see all, all people around me and I could see out into the distance and see tons of other people. But my neighbors were very cool. They were very quiet and and some of them were really friendly. And I had I had a lot of fun with my neighbors being cool. And they were friendly people and it wasn't a problem at all. I didn't have any problems with, with anybody. Except there was one lady when I was doing water, I was filling up my tanks and she was just a grumpy lady, right? There's, there's a fair amount of older people and she was just one of those grumpy ladies and she just had a bad attitude. And it's like, I was having a great time and I was just filling up my tanks and she thought I wasn't filling up my tank. She thought I was just parked there for no reason or something, but literally there was water flowing into my tank. So I just kind of brushed her off and she drove away to a different water station. That was the only bad experience I had and it wasn't bad at all. It made me laugh. It was kind of a funny, funny moment for me. But I would say, yeah, every nomad should go to Quartzsite if only just to see the merchandise that's for sale there, see how other people live. You can see other people's rigs. You don't even have to go into their camp or, or meet other people. You can just see the way people set up their campsites and the different kind of rigs that people have. There's buses, there's huge RVs, there's huge class A's with like tons of solar panels. They'll angle their solar panels. They'll have um, generators. There wasn't a lot of generator use because most people are using solar, solar panels. So as far as like generator noise, I didn't really have one time I moved to a camps campsite, a new campsite that I picked and there was somebody with a generator that it was pretty far away, but I could still hear it. And that was a little bit annoying, but really not a big deal at all. So as far as like noise, it, I didn't have any, have any issues with it. And if you do, you can just say, well, I'm going to move in the morning and then pack up your stuff and go find a new campsite. It's, you know, in this lifestyle, we're used to moving around anyways. So when you get to quartzite, you can stay in that one campsite for seven months with that permit. You never have to move if you don't want to. You can go dump your tanks and then drive right back to the same campsite. But since we're used to moving on a regular basis, it's really easy to just be like, well, I'll be here for one week or a couple nights or two weeks or maybe a month. And then I'll move to a different area and you can kind of hop around. I only had probably maybe five, five campsites last year. And... It was just, it was just really fun and really like relaxing to not have to think about, oh, where am I going to dump my tanks? Where am I going to get water? Uh, things like that. Like where, oh, where am I going to go get groceries? It's, it becomes a routine. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice. It's kind of like when you live in a house because you live in this neighborhood, you know where everything is. And so you get really, really comfortable. That's probably the only thing I didn't like about it was that it gets really comfortable. So you kind of have to mix it up. You kind of have to motivate yourself to like, oh, I'm going to move camps and make some changes. And so I think maybe this year I might try some different areas, some, you know, driving to some of the different campgrounds that you can use the pass at. 
because I pretty much stayed in in one basic area right there in right in the, right in the town of Quartzsite. I think the only thing that I've heard people say they didn't like about staying in Quartzsite was that they say like there's nothing to do around there. But what I found was, and this is part of my secret as as far as like camping in the uh, the permit areas to getting a really secluded spot where I camped, I could go and get out of my trailer in the morning or whenever I wanted and hike. I, I couldn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't even find anybody else. I, I could hike miles and I wouldn't even run into another person. So I could hike out into the desert. It's basically just, it's pretty flat desert. It's kind of a little bit sloped, a little bit rolling and there's washes all throughout it. In a way, it's like not the most exciting hiking. It's pretty monotonous. It's pretty much just desert here, desert there, rocky desert, sandy desert, bushes, same kind of bushes. There's a fair amount of trees, you know, not huge trees, but plenty of shade, which is which is pretty nice. There's no, no water, no running water, like creeks or anything like that. One cool thing about the hiking there is that you can find all kinds of gems and minerals and things like that. And you're finding like these crystals, quartz crystals. There's quartz crystals on the ground, kind of in a sense, like everywhere. Like they'll just be on top of the ground. You'd be hiking around, you see something glittering and you'll just kind of start hiking towards it, hoping like, oh, maybe it's going to be a really cool gem. A lot of times it's just like a shiny rock that's been sitting out in the sun forever and it's like totally baked and it's just like black, shiny rock. But sometimes you'll get to this shiny glint in the in the desert and it's a it's a gem it's a little gemstone it's a little piece of a crystal a little broken off like shard of a crystal kind of thing and for me that was like really fun because a lot of times you just run into like rocks and sand and dirt and it's kind of repetitive like granite and things like that not super interesting like geologically anyways but here you can find actual like gems and gemstones and things like that yeah like i was saying i would recommend it and i'm excited about it i'm looking forward to it it's relaxing. It's going to be a good place for me to make uh, more videos. They're not going to be as visually uh, dynamic because it's just going to be all kind of the same kind of backgrounds and things like that. It's very brown and deserty and sun baked and cactusy and you know there's a lot of Palo Verde trees and it's all kind of the same kind of bushes. A lot of creosote bushes. I love the creosote plant when it rains it smells so good it's some people take like sprigs of it and you can put it in your shower and i've done that in, in the trailer here and when you take a shower then you smell the the creosote plant and it smells so good so there's a lot of like like hippie stuff like hippie dippy kind of stuff too there's like old people in rvs and then there's like hippies there's like a nudist group that's out there um not a lot of like loud music or anything there's some there's a few big kind of campfires that you can kind of hop around to, but it's really not super exciting. It's pretty relaxing, comfortable. It feels very safe. And that's why I'm looking forward to it is because I'm just going to be super comfortable and I'll be able to make some cool videos. So let me know what you guys think of this style of video. I really like editing and I like presenting like kind of cool stories, kind of fun stories, exciting things that happen or, you know, try to make them a little bit more exciting. This is just kind of off the cuff, just me talking, rambling, but I, I'm getting excited about Quartzsite and I kind of wanted to get you all excited about the, the move we're going to make to Quartzsite coming up here really soon on the channel. So keep watching the channel and uh, give us a, a like, hit the like button. Let us know you're watching. We like to know you're watching and uh, until next time.